Welcome, Saturday morning. Your uh, host here. <laughs> um, yes, it is Saturday morning and I have iced tea because it is Saturday morning when you're tuning in, but uh, of course uh, it is a it is a kind of as we approach here into our spring as we segue into summer like that has no real uh, escalate for us here in the desert. It just kind of happens and it just gets really warm. So anyway, back here with you and we're going to be doing some um, comments and everything reading with you. So I do appreciate everybody that's checked in back in with us uh, that uh, does uh, tune in every Saturday morning. We do appreciate that and uh, here for the show. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and read through the comments again in no particular order. But uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, run through those. Uh, if your comment wasn't read, um, we, uh, you know, either you just it was after production of the show or, um, you know, it just got pulled for whatever reason. Sometimes the moderator pulls stuff, stuff that I, I'm not sure why, but they do. So anyway, here we go. First stuff, Jerry Johnson. Welcome back, Jerry Johnson. We haven't, we missed you, buddy. We haven't seen you or heard from you for a while. We're glad to see this uh, comment from you, but it uh, looks like, um, sorry to see that. Um, you, it says, I have been a primary caregiver for my mom. Her pancreas failed on her, and I had to help her with all her medication, medicine and uh, diabetes shots. Uh, she, you know, she, and so she's doing great now. I'm glad to hear that. Um, that's, you know, that's, a, that's a, a downer, you know, when our parents... They need our help and we need to be there for them because, you know, they help get us where we're at. And there's times where you got to return a favor. Like with my mom, I make sure that, um, you know, I can get her whatever she wants. Uh, she wants to come out and visit out here. I need to make sure I can pay for that plane ticket, you know, and stuff like that. So uh, it's that is important. Um, it's been a year and a half since uh, I got to watch your show again, Bat Jack JW, another great radio show, sir. Well, I am glad you are back. Um, yes, you missed a year, a lot of good stuff, a lot of good stuff. So you have a lot of back uh, log videos to go and uh, check out there, Jerry. But I'm glad to hear you're back with us and your mom is okay. All right, Jeffrey Richardson, good morning, good coffee. Well, in this case, iced tea, but <laughs> coffee to all the working stiffs. And all the nine to fivers. Okay, the crazy Scotsman. You can never remake the quality classics. Ain't no one could do Dirty Harry like old Clint. Yes, sir. Trial and error and taking time on fitting is key in all firearm projects. Yes, uh, and patience, which I lack. I uh, I'm very uh, a very impatient person. All right, Smith. Uh, Complied with uh, with Clinton era BS. Lipsy's actually has a couple of new exclusive ones that no uh, longer have the key lock. Ooh, well that's interesting. Yes, um, definitely. I think that uh, Smith really hurt themselves with that. I really do. Um, that was a huge mistake on that. Um, you got a reply here. Mitchell says when uh, S and W uh, capulated to Clinton, I stopped purchasing new. If I want a Smith, I look for an old school uh, models pre uh, Clinton BS. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, I you know you can't help when when you're looking at a bunch of old Smiths and stuff. You know, when that key lock is an eyesore, it pops right out. A lot of times, people do pass on them. Um, but, uh, you know, there is some that are out there that I really, actually, I've really, I kind of want one of the new Model 29s just because of the modern technology that's involved in it and, and making it. I know it has the key lock and everything, but actually, I, I'm going to be able to just, you know, put that aside and actually want one of those new Model 29s. All right, Beretta 9mm USA says, hey, Bat Jack JW, I have added a few 9mm 1911 pistols that I plan to cover over the next 12 months. Um, I, don't, I don't have a 22 LR 1911. Ah, I didn't for a while till I put that one that I have together. And like I said, that one is kind of special for me because I put it together. And it is a all alloy um, frame and slide and you know all that stuff which we talked about um but shooting a few 1911s and nine millimeter will save me hundreds of dollars 
It does. Um, I I like the 45 auto. Um, I know, but most of the 1911s I shoot uh, these days are in 9mm. I know some people are like, oh, are you kidding me? But uh, no, I, I, I do prefer it in 9mm. Uh, over 45 ACP 1911 pistols. I have a Jet Black Beretta 92M9 basic model coming for summer 2024. I wanted to see how good a $680 uh, Beretta 92M9 is compared to our military M9. Uh, more fun with 9mm coming soon. Stay safe, my friend. And that comes from Beretta Senior. So that's cool. I mean, that's kind of a, that's awesome. You know, I appreciate you sharing some of your upcoming uh, projects here on the uh, the Collector's Radio Show. Uh, and if you guys are like me that really like his channel, I'm going to be looking forward to a lot of those videos to check it out. He and his son do some really phenomenal work. Great camera work, um, awesome uh, photography, and really a good sense of humor. I, I still, I, I love that video that you, they did with that shockwave that was a 20 gauge. And, and Brenna Sr. Uh, actually was in the bush shooting it. I don't know why, but that video was just so fun. Um, that looked like a riot to be there at the range with that one. That, that was just awesome stuff. Really wholesome and comedy uh, driven. Just awesome. Just, you know, no no lying about nothing. Just <laughs> laying it out like it is. <laughs> All right. Slim Fire. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it is that time around here where the um, the wind and the you know, flowers are starting to come out. Um, really starts to... Um, I never used to have like allergies and stuff till I moved out here. So, all right, Slimfire, I think uh, this was one of your best collector's radio uh, talk, uh, JW. I appreciate that. Thank you. You covered a lot, and it was enjoyable. You're right about how, how fast uh, time is passing and getting up tired sometimes and thinking, where did the day go? Yeah, before I know it, sun's down, time to stay indoors and lock the doors, unfortunately, these days. Um, so live each day the best you can. And if you have the opportunity to move to another state, do it. You won't regret it. Yeah, a um, lot of statement in that. You know, there is a lot to be said about that. Um, I, I, I think about that a lot myself. Um, even though, uh, you know, out here is, you know, has been home for quite some time. Uh, that thought definitely crossed my mind about other states. And maybe, you know, possibly, maybe, I don't know. You never know sometimes. It's also good to have the right tools to work on your firearms, too. Yes, it is. Uh, I'll never forget my Uncle Milton, uh, Milt K, as I love him dearly. I miss him every day. I spent a lot of time with him. And, uh, I miss those days. I never ever would have, in my wildest dreams, look, thinking I'd be sitting here looking back at those and they'd be memories when, you know, it was so, like, to me, last weekend, it was literally a reality hanging out with the guy. Made me laugh. Um... You know, he was like my buddy. Uh, I enjoyed every every day hanging out with him. I miss him. But he got me for Christmas, which I still have it, a Wheeler uh, screwdriver set, which I still have it. Uh, I've lost some of the bits over time, sorry. But <laughs> I still got the same set. And you know what he told me? He said, here, this is so you don't screw up. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so they say right tool for the job. That's right. Thanks, Slim. All right. Sean, great show as usual. Uh, did I hear a hint of a blued python in our future? Can't wait. Well, say no more. Tango and Cash is another great movie from that era. Yes. I. <laughs> you know what I love about that movie? Stallone was able to poke fun of himself or something like that. I think he says... I don't want to repeat it, but that, that is a good movie. All right, you got Stallone with the Model 36 in this one. Cringe every time I see the Hollywood flip being done to revolvers. Oh, yeah, gosh. I What was one I was watching, man? It was bad. Um, it's good. It's a good movie, but, boy, I I just cringed up when I... Uh, it was the November Man with uh, Pierce Brosnan. And he takes a revolver and he's doing the Russian roulette thing and he spins that chamber and he slams it shut hard, man. And I just, I just couldn't, I'm like, oh man, 
did they really do that to that gun? Yes, they did, unfortunately. I'm sure all those revolvers are ruined. You know, in fact, thinking about that stuff, if you watch Dirty Harry, Magnum Force, when he's down with uh, those guys in the, uh, the the gun range, when they the motorcycle guys, uh, David Soul and them, uh, they said, uh, you know, oh, you know, give the range to yourself if you want it, whatever. He says, no, that's all right. After he's done shooting and he, just, he gives the other uh, um, the other guy a, a try with it, Sweet, I think is his name. It's the guy from Animal House, as I remember him. But watch him kind of, he shuts the cylinder. He doesn't do the Hollywood flip, which was nice. And then you watch him grab the cylinder and he actually turns it to make sure it's locked in place. That was cool. I mean, I don't know if he was directed to do that or Clint just spent some time with revolvers or spent a lot of time with that revolver because that was pretty cool. I like the Magnum Force the best because, I mean, you had pythons and you had the Model 29 going head to head. Um, I really, the only thing I wish that in the end of that movie, I wish Clint would have had his, his uh, 29 to battle it out with those guys in that warehouse. Instead, he was running around, uh, running away from their pythons, chasing after them. Um, which he had to take him on hand-to-hand -hand combat, but <laughs> that's all right. Anyway, uh, Joe P, swig of, uh, in my case, tea for Joe. Um, everybody else, swig of coffee for Joe. All right, and the working class. All of us here uh, working for the paycheck or have, you know, retired from the jobs but spent all their time, you know, slaving away, making those checks that never seems to fix the things at the end of 30 days, right? Good morning, JW. I have six Smith & Wesson revolvers. Six! Boy, you got me beat. <laughs> uh, and all have the safety hole. I don't like the hole, what the, what the hole represents. Um, but I love the guns nonetheless. Nonetheless. Yes, uh, I agree with you. I'm with you on that one. Uh, I would not get rid of them, any of them, even if I could get vintage ones without the holes, which is not possible living in California. Um, that being said, I carry my revolver. My carry revolver is a Ruger LCR, and one of the many reasons I choose it is uh, if there was no lock to worry about. Yeah, good choice. Uh, Ruger LCR, not bad. You know, that's a Ruger does make a strong uh, piece. All right, this one's from Snowy Rider. I haven't worked on a 1911 in a long time. I got my I got a minty Springfield slide and frame waiting for some work. Um, I always liked uh, Wilson Combat parts, but feel Ed Brown parts are best for the money. Yeah, I actually picked up a bag of uh, Ed Brown parts a few months ago. I think it was um, just extra parts, internal parts, pins and stuff that a gun shop had. It's Ed Brown stuff, um, but it was it was a good value for what you get especially yeah and Ed Brown still makes an arch mainspring housing which a lot of people don't so no problems there uh, takes a lot of time once you get a family it's hard to complete yes I can believe that uh, the ability to change and modify 1911s is one of its most endearing aspects for me uh, it has helped me uh, to keep the 1911 relevant as long as it has I think and yeah um, you know what I mean there's people have always said there wouldn't be companies, if it was a bad gun, there wouldn't be companies like Ed Brown, Les Bear, Nighthawk Customs, um, you know, you got those other guys, you know, all these other people making and putting all that time into that pistol, uh, Wilson Combat, and, and doing it. And, you know, I mean, of course, like, you know, it's neat because where Bill Wilson comes from. And then you got super guys out there, like, I think they're like the last dying breed of guys, like Hackathorn and stuff like that. I mean, those guys are cool. I mean, they're, they're like kind of heroes, you know, to me. All right, Eric. Hey, bud. Um... You are getting your grips from Thailand too, huh? Yes, I definitely. I'm a big fan of them. Always have been. Um, been buying their stuff for a long time. I They've doubled in price over the years. But hey, you know, to be expected. But yes, I think the Thailand grips are the best for the money because they really make them like the old school days. And I think it's the best you're going to get for as repops. Um, other companies can't seem to get it, but them, them, whoever's doing them in Thailand has got it done right, man. They're they're phenomenal. I hope they don't quit. Um, so more power to them. I'm I'm a big supporter of their stuff. 
Been buying them uh, from the same guy for several years now. I have a short D-frame grips for my agent from him. Only thing I didn't like is how red they look. He makes darker brown uh, grips, uh, or at least he was. I, ju I just bought an ebony varnish pen uh, and kept going over and over them until they got darker. I just got a Colt Pocket Positive from 1926. Ooh, golden oldie right there. And even if I didn't have... Wow, you really... Uh, you really went all out on this one. Even if I didn't have the SN stamped inside of the grips, I figure old Colts would too. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure what, how, at what point did they stop uh, serializing the grips too with a pencil. But I mean, then again, I don't. I mean, not an expert. I don't know. But I guess uh, that was a Smith thing. Maybe. I, I don't know. I didn't have enough old Colts like that to look. Uh, his fake pearl looks outstanding these days. Yeah, uh, quick tip out there for uh, just sharing with everybody. Um, fake pearl grips or ivory grips, uh, in fact, um, any of the, uh, even the brown uh, wood grips that you get, you know, if you don't like that reddish uh, color, uh, as Eric here was talking about, leather dye. Try some leather dye in that stuff, man. Leather dye is pretty powerful, amazing things. It dries up quick, and then after you're done, I mean, if you don't want it to bleed out in your hands or anything, you're worried about that, uh, throw some, you know, uh, clear coat on it. You can get flat matte, you know, non-glossy clear coat, or if you like me, you like to gloss, gloss it up. Um, you know, depending on the revolver, I like the high gloss finish myself. It just gives it that glitzy look, I guess, that I like. Um, they get better and better the more and they look like pearl as time goes. I have done the uh, brown uh, leather dye on pearl grips. It does make them look pretty good. Uh, so check that out. Uh, nice show, bud. Have a great weekend. You too. Thanks. I appreciate that, Eric. Uh, you've been doing some really cool stuff over there on your channel, and I do appreciate And I, I love seeing Jackie always. Your dog is, uh, she is such a, a phenomenal dog you have there. All right, Warren. Hey, Bad Jack. Uh, my favorite actor is Toshiro Mofuni. Yes. What a great, you know what, one of my favorite movies with him is Red Sun with Charles Bronson. Uh, Toshiro Mifune was amazing in that. And the other one I really like, Hell in the Pacific, him and uh, Lee Marvin. All right, and I know someone who met him. I have met Richard Norton, who is pretty a pretty cool guy. I agree with, with Time Flying, being 41 myself, just recently lost my dad. Beretta 9mm USA is one of the best reviewing videos. Uh, 10.8 Performance is another great 1911 channel. Yes, absolutely. And sorry about your dad. Um, time marches on so quickly from out from under us, doesn't it, Warren? All right, Eric, back here again. I, I heard that in the late 90s, the company that bought Smith & Wesson from Bangor Punta, uh, I'm probably pronouncing that completely wrong, was a company called Safe T Lock. Or something or some such spelling I have a feeling that that was a reason uh, the out reason the out of the locks of the new Smiths hmm all right fire says you're hinting that your next Python is blue <laughs> okay all right anybody that's actually still here at 18 minutes into this thing that's all your comments there for everybody so I do appreciate that um, yes okay We've got the comments down. Hopefully we've answered everything. And uh, again, apologize if yours wasn't read or anything like that. Probably after the fact. Or, like I said, for some reason, um, the moderator does pull stuff. I'm not sure why, but they do. Okay. You can tell how warm it's getting out here with the amount of iced tea. and uh, Stay hydrated in the desert. All right. The big blue elephant in the room everybody's probably been for the last 19 minutes been eyeballing this case yes it is it is exactly what you think it is um actually um didn't plan on it being on this radio show believe it or not I didn't plan it that way it just kind of happened um so here it is and also tomorrow will be a actual tabletop review on it so don't forget to catch that tomorrow it'll be up for you bright and early for sunday please everybody when the when the uh 
review of this comes out and it's the standalone review video go ham on that sucker and click it share it spread it around and uh, bring me bring that video up to some views I want to see it take off um, being I don't really do videos like that much anymore certain things just deserve it and that one does but uh, spread the love on that one please guys okay here we go that's right the blued python back in the hands of me <laughs> what else did we get in this box because I didn't unbox the thing in the, in the, the um, video I didn't even show it um, you got the uh, I don't even know how that broke but it did um, got the little uh, firing pin uh, block thing the orange hang tag yes this QR code funny sticker thing was on the trigger guard you got a booklet manual lock they don't even say Colt anymore they used to be blue and say Colt now they're just nothing I guess they don't they stop carrying on that one a um, bunch of uh, letters here things to join what is this important notice from Colts uh, the following warning is provided because the Massachusetts Attorney General requires that the company uh, it requires that it accompany any handgun transfer offered in Massachusetts Colt agrees long advocated a need to keep firearms out of the hands of those who should not possess them however this warning is not Colts and therefore Colts makes no representation concerning its truth or accuracy Warning from Massachusetts. Wow, I've never seen this before. How many of you guys have actually seen this letter? I've never seen this. What's this all about? I don't know. Crazy, crazy stuff that's being included. You know, they got the booklet here. I actually didn't really take the booklet apart or look at it. I don't know. I guess it's just one of their standard, but that's kind of neat. You know, we get to see the booklets and everything. I know, I know. Everybody's like, come on, pick the gun up. Um, okay, there it is. You guys will get to see it first. I threw those old grips on it. The Thailand grips, as you can see, it throws it back to the original look. That's at least what I thought. This is the originals that come with it. The, this should be you know, nothing different than what everybody else has got on it. I'm not knocking these. I'm glad that they do it. I'm glad that they include these in the, in the, the, in the package. I wouldn't sell them or get rid of them or anything like that. Actually, now I mean, being I switched it out, I'm just going to put these in the box, keep it there with the, all that. Uh, I'm glad that they're doing it. I'm not knocking that. Uh, I just, I don't, I mean, they're thin. They're a little thinner. Um, they, they don't quite look like the old ones, although they, they, they you know, they do kind of have the look at least, you know, they're, they're, they're all right. Um, however, I feel that the ones from Thailand captured the look even closer. So, and you can see they're a little bit wider there in comparison. They're a little bit wider, if you can see that. And I like the color. I do like the color. It makes, it, makes that thing look like the old school uh, python. Take a look at the bluing, okay? All right, make sure you get the look at that bluing because that's what it's all about. That was one of the things that I questioned about it. I said, what is that bluing going to really look like? Um, in the video, you will see a better look at the bluing. The bluing to me is, I'm going to give you my straight up honest opinion. I really don't think there's that much of a damn difference. I don't know. I mean, I my eyesight is only what it's what how good it is but I'm telling you this is really good now I'm gonna talk about this a little bit now some of the stuff that you saw around keep in mind the gun shows that the gun is shipped off in this bag right here okay and this bag is got oil all up in it okay it's like they brush the gun down with oil and they stuff they stuff it in this bag um, and that, that, that's got a bunch of grease or, you know, that oil all over it. In fact, I shouldn't have even been touching the bag and then I'm going to handle this because now I'm going to put fingerprints all over this thing um, and, and kind of ruin the, the look. But a lot of these gun companies or um, gun um, shops probably just took the thing right out of the bag and just put it right there in the, uh, in the showcase. 
And so when you saw it, it may have not have, you know, looked as great uh, as it, it is. It truly is. Photographs that I've seen of it, um, you know, even my video, I'm, you know, I've tried to do the best I could with lighting and everything, probably didn't serve it much justice. I'm going to be telling you honestly, it probably didn't serve it much justice. Let me check the screw right here. Uh, well, I know everybody's probably freaking out. Um, that screwdriver is the wrong tip for it anyway. But I know in the early days when these first came out, they had issues with this screw backing out, causing the side plate to come up off a little bit and um, causing the hammer to, you know, some problems. They fixed that bug out. Um, the action on this thing, oh my gosh. Look, look at that. I mean, unbelievable. That trigger pull does not stack at all. The roll marks and everything are gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm actually tempted to gold fill mine. I'm not sure if I'm going to, but I, I am very tempted to gold fill mine just to dress it up because to me that was... My original one I had, just like this, uh, a six inch barrel one, and I, I, I still, you know, there's times where I've missed it, and that's another reason why I, I ended up with this thing. Um, there was times that I missed it, and I wish I didn't get rid of it, and um, it was gold filled, you know, and, and it got the rampant pony on there. Um, it looks like the, the cylinder release latch is not polished blued. Um, like the rest of it is I mean I guess you know if you're nitpicking um, but the trigger is the hammer is which I love that hammer I love all how it's all blued it's not sided like the old ones the old ones were they're polished on the sides um, I personally honestly I always felt because mine had because of that mine had actually rust on the side of it and pitted actually believe it or not um it's got that ugly qr code here but you know what honestly before people start making a big deal out of it i hardly noticed it myself um am i going to say that they should have put it under the grips over here yeah they should have colt kind of i mean screwed the pooch on that one i think uh because they they took that you know that's ugly um not a deal breaker anywhere, anywhere near a deal breaker for me. Serial number, it's over here. They could have put it under the crane in the frame here, like they should have, like all of them are, uh, all of the ones from yesteryear, or under the grips, under the frame here, they can put it there. Um, but it is, I, I can't believe how amazing it is. It's a, a real classy revolver. Um, they do have the four. I went with the six, just the classic barrel length. Had they have the six, um, that was my first one I ever owned was the six. And uh, so I went with the six. They do have the four out there as well. Um, I'm kind of on the fence. I'm still not sure on the four. One thing I don't know, one thing I don't like on it, and this is just the purest in me, and that's one thing too. This is so closely representing the old originals, that's why, you know, I went ahead and, and actually got one myself. Because there really is, this is identical to the original. Um, they squeezed three of these vent ribs onto the 4-inch. So they basically squeezed them all together. Come on, Colt. You know this. The 6-inch barrel has three. The 2, the 4-inch barrel has the 2. The 1 and the 3 had the 1. And I think the 8 had 4. The 8-inch barrel, the one had 4. So why they deviated from that, I don't know. They should have stuck with their tradition. Uh, the, the stainless ones are like that. So all the ones that I see of the bl other blued ones of the 4, they squeezed these ribs together and made three of them on there. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, to each their own. To each their own. Some people hate the hammer that it's not sided or doesn't have the big wide... Uh, beaver tail looking paddle on it um, I also think that some of those I seen some of those that were broken uh, maybe that's why they did it but I the hammer I I mean I like it I, I got no problem with it it works it's functional 
you know, could they have made it a little wider to be more, I don't know, I guess they could have, you know, but really, in the end, I mean, I'm just nitpicking. Um, like my other one, and like this one, I don't know, maybe, you know, some people, different luck or whatever, my sight doesn't move. I don't know, and I didn't touch it. It came, it's locked in place. I mean, I'm not, it's not moving back and forth like everybody other says. Um, my two, my two and a half, or yeah, it was the two and a half. My other little shorty, uh, snubby python, same way. It doesn't move. It hasn't moved. Um, I haven't even touched it. I just brought the site. I think I brought this site down a little bit just to kind of match up, you know, for me where I liked it. But, you know, other than that, yeah. Beefed up the metal up here. Forcing cones to me is a lot better. It's a lot more uh, thick in there and looks like it's ready to handle some rounds. Again, um, the bluing on this thing, it just, uh, I, it just, you can't really serve it much justice until you actually see it in your hand and they see it up close because, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> there you have it, the blued python. Check it out uh, tomorrow on the uh, review. Um, like I said, everybody, uh, go ahead and uh, check it out, share it, um, get it some views there. So I want to see it, uh, you know, kind of, kind of get up there. I usually don't pan out for you guys, from you guys, but uh, I'd like to see it kind of get some heavy views out there, you know, skyrocket a little bit. But there it is, the blue python. I, I. You know, I remember my buddy coming home or coming over to my home uh, one morning and he said, first thing he said to me, he goes, man, did you see they got the new blue python? I said, what? They actually did it? <laughs> and he said, yeah, man. And he said, check it out. And we watched a video of SHOT Show, them showing it. And I just said, I'll be damned. Uh, I was like, I, I'm, I can't believe they did it. They, they actually did it. Um, a lot of people, including me, didn't think they could ever do it. I didn't think the Python would ever be made again. Um, and here we are, you know, uh, you know, as of 2020, they've got quite a few of them out on the market. Colt's hitting a home run with this, and uh, a lot of people are buying them up and, and getting to enjoy them. And that's what's really cool, because that's the most important thing to me, is now we got this gun available on the market, I'm not saying that the MSRP is cheap, but it is also not the scalper's price that was happening uh, with them. And now we got one that we can get. It's fit and finish is unbelievable. The action is just great. Um, high polished blue, it's phenomenal. And you know, here it is. We can enjoy it, we can shoot it, we can handle magnums. Um, it does. I'm telling you, uh, as somebody to handle the older ones, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the vintage stuff. You folks know this from hanging out with me. Been doing this for 10 years. Big fan of the vintage stuff. But I tell you, this one feels so much stronger than the old one. I just, I've got to say it. I mean, I'm a big fan of the old stuff, but I got to say they're, they, they've surpassed it. Some, you know, they're, this one surpasses it. Uh, and, the, and the blued finish, like I said, I mean, if you get one and actually clean that oil off of it and wipe it down, underneath that is this gorgeous finish that's really what the gun's all about. I'm telling you, I can't tell much of a difference. So, anyway, there you go.